Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It is a beautiful day to make something together. Have you ever made something that you really loved and thought to yourself, I wish there was an easy way to replicate that without having to start over from scratch? Or if you sell your crafts, maybe you've wondered if there was an easier way to make the design in bulk to save time. I mean, we've all wondered this, I think. Well, I have some awesome news. There is an easier way, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. The secret is to use a reusable stencil. You can cut your favorite design once or even cut a few of your favorites all at the same time and then reuse the stencil over and over again to make beautiful things like this sign. The best part is that you can use the stencil on all sorts of blanks. Wood signs, tea towels, t-shirts, tote bags, you name it. It's a huge time saver. Of course, you could also make stencils out of vinyl, but those are one and done. And once you've used them, that's it. And that's fine if you only want to make one of something. But if you're looking for the best way to make lots of some things using the same design, like this cute one, then this is for you. I really, really love this technique and I am super excited to share it with you. So come with me over to my craft table and we will get started. Now the best reusable stencils are made with a special craft plastic. It's super important that you use this specific kind. I tested all sorts of plastic for this tutorial and this one was the winner. It's called Graphics Clear Craft Plastic and it's made from 0.007 inch thick plastic that can easily be cut with scissors, craft knives, punches, and cutting machines like the Cricut cutting machine. I'm using 12 by 12 inch sheets for this and this pack comes with 25 sheets in a pack. Now the other trick to make reusable stencils work is a way to stick the stencil to your project. I recommend Krylon Easy Tack Repositionable Adhesive Spray. This works the best for holding your stencil in place as you work. To actually use the stencil, you need paint. You can use both fabric paint and chalk paint, depending on your surface. You should also be able to use acrylic paint as too. I just didn't try that one. To apply the paint, I'm going to use a round foam brush it looks like this. And I do want to point out that the shape of the foam brush is very important, and I will explain why a bit later. We'll also need a small paint brush like this one. And I'm going to show you a fun paint hack, a way to stain your wood without stain using baby wipes. <laughs> now you need something to paint on, right? Now I'm going to use some 10 by 10 inch wood panels like this and 100% cotton flour sack towels to show you how to stencil each type of paint that I have here on the table. And stencils can be cut with scissors, craft knives, but I'm gonna use my Cricut cutting machine for the fastest, most precise cut. If you also use a Cricut, you'll want to use the fine point blade included with your machine plus a sticky machine mat. Now, if your green standard grip machine mat like this one is not clean and sticky, please use a purple strong grip mat instead. You'll just be happier that way. You want it to stick well. You'll also want a brayer, an extra large scraper, painter's tape, butcher's paper to protect your surface, and gloves to protect your hands. So let me show you where to find the free designs that I use for all of these awesome reusable stencils, and then we will get started. Step one, prepare your wood sign. If you're using an unfinished wood sign like me, you'll wanna start preparing that first so it has time to dry while you prepare your design. I recommend laying down some butcher paper to protect your work area. You can fully paint your signs or use a faux stain method like I did. I used some of the paints just as they are, but I also had fun mixing some of the paints. For this sign, I'm going to mix black and white chalk paint to create a dark gray rustic sign. Once you have your color chosen, dab a pea-sized amount of paint onto a baby wipe or damp paper towel and rub it into the wood sign. I recommend going with the grain for the best result. Apply a little at a time to make sure the paint isn't too thick. This method dries quickly, so allow about an hour for the paint to be dry. If you used a different method, be sure to allow enough time for your sign to fully dry before you apply your reusable stencil. Step 2. 
get my free stencil designs. I've created a collection of beautiful designs for this project. To find them, just go to my blog at jennifermaker.com 349 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top, and then either click get a password if you don't yet have one, or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching the page for design number 349, and then click it to download a zip file with SVG files for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, DXF files, and a printable PDF for cutting by hand. I want to show you how to cut these designs on a Cricut cutting machine. So first upload the SVG cut file to Cricut Design Space. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGS to learn how. Here's what my reusable stencil designs will look like in Cricut Design Space. Once the design is uploaded, zoom out to see the whole design in the lower left. Step three, prepare your reusable stencil designs. My reusable stencil designs are sized for 10 by 10 inch blank signs. If you're using a different size, I'll show you how to make a template to size your stencil correctly. First, click ungroup above the layers panel. You can hide or delete any of the stencils that you don't want to make. You can hide a design by clicking the eye icon on the right of the layers panel. You could also select a design and click delete. Click on shapes and then select the square. Enter your dimensions in the size boxes in the toolbar at the top. My wood signs say they're 10 inches square, but when I measured them, they were closer to nine and three quarters of an inch. So be sure to measure your blank, even if you think you bought a specific size. If you're making a rectangular sign, you'll want to unlock the square to change the dimensions. Click the padlock on the lower left corner of your square to make a rectangular shape with the resize handle. Your template will be the top layer. With a template selected, click on Arrange at the top and then choose Send to Back. It also helps to change your template to white so you can better see your design over your template. Make sure your template is still selected and click on the color menu at the top near Operation. I chose white. Now click and drag your design over the template. If you need to resize your design to fit your project, you can use the resize handle on the lower right hand side of the bounding box to make it bigger or smaller. And make sure that you leave enough margin around your design to easily position the stencil on your blank material. I made the widest part of my design about one inch smaller than my template. This left about a half inch margin on each side. Okay, so now let's add some personalization. This step is optional, of course, but lots of fun. I'm going to show you how to personalize my monogram design. So first click on the text icon on the left. You can browse or search for the font you'd like. For this part, I'm using the Times font, but you can use any font you want. Select your font and the font menu will close. You may need to single click into your text box to type your monogram letter. I also chose to change my font to bold. Once you've typed your letter, click anywhere on the canvas to exit out of text editing mode. You can now click and drag your letter into the center of your design. Use the resize handle to enlarge your letter, and if the letter does not fit the way that you'd like, you can unlock it for more adjustments by clicking on the pad-like icon on the lower left-hand side of the bounding box. All right, so now I wanna add an established date. So I click on the text icon again to select my font. This time I'm using the font Flaminga Lingo. <laughs> this is a font that I purchased from fontbundles.net. Once your additional text is set, click and drag it into place and resize as necessary. Now, if you want to upload your favorite font to Cricut Design Space, I can help with that. Just go to jennifermaker.com slash fonts and to see a tutorial and video that walks you through the process step by step. If you've typed any letters with an enclosed center area, which is also called a counter, you will need to connect those to the stencil or they will fall out later when you remove your stencil from your cutting mat. So letters that have counters are things like A, E, O, and P. There's not a set list of letters because different fonts may or may not connect to produce the counters. So my design has a counter in the date. 
I recommend zooming in closely for this part. I've zoomed into 400%. Now to fix this, we're going to click on shapes and select the square, just like we did for the template earlier. Unlock your square and resize it down to a slender rectangle like this. My rectangle is only two hundredths of an inch wide. Click and drag it over your closed letter so that the rectangle overlaps the inside of the letter and the stencil outside the letter. Now with the rectangle selected, hold down your shift key and select the text with the counter. And then with those two layers selected, click the slice icon. Four sliced results will appear at the top of your layers panel. You can delete all of the layers except for the text that you want in your design. Now you have your letter connected to your stencil. Repeat these steps if you have more than one letter that needs the center attached to it. You can go ahead and zoom back out to see your template and design. To make sure your added elements are in alignment, click Select All and then click on Align and then choose Center Horizontally. Now once again, click Select All at the top. If your monogram design layers aren't still selected, and then click Attach. This is very important. This will cut your stencil in a square to help you better align it on your wood sign. And don't worry about what color design space changes your stencil to, because you're cutting it out of one piece of stencil material. So go ahead and click Make It. Step four, create your custom material setting and cut your design. After clicking Make It, select On Met on the next screen if you're prompted. There is nothing to change on the preview screen, so simply click Continue in the lower right corner. The stencil material can be a little tricky to cut, but I found a great custom setting that gave me a clean cut every time. To set up your own custom material, click Browse All Materials and then click on Material Settings in the lower left. And scroll all the way to the bottom of the window and click Add New Material. And I'm going to name my new setting Craft Plastic and then click Save. So after you click Save, the window should scroll up to the new setting that you just named. But if it doesn't, just find it in the list and click Edit. So my settings are as follows. The cut pressure is 350 and the multi-cut is 4x. So once you've changed it to these things, go ahead and click Save. Now scroll back up to the top and click the X or scroll all the way down and click Done to exit the custom material setting screen. Once again, click on Browse All Materials, find your custom material and select it. I normally recommend changing your pressure to more, but since our setting has the maximum pressure applied, you can just keep it set to default. Now it's time to put your craft plastic onto your green sticky mat. I used my brayer to make sure that it was adhere really well to the mat. Now you're ready to load it into your machine. Press the flashing button and then watch it cut. If your machine mat is not new or not very sticky, I suggest that you use a purple strong grip mat instead or use some painter's tape to hold down the craft plastic. Really a clean sticky mat is key for a successful cut here. Once your reusable stencil is all done cutting, press the arrows to unload your machine mat and flip your mat over and gently peel your mat away from your craft plastic. Your scraper may be helpful with removing little bits that get stuck to your mat. Just remember to go slow so you don't rip your stencil. Step five, use your reusable stencil on a wood blank or tea towel. Once you have your stencil and all the small bits removed, it's time to make your project. Remember, as always, safety first. I recommend wearing protective gloves, a mask, and eye protection whenever you're working with any type of household or industrial chemicals. And remember to follow all the safety precautions on the product label to avoid any possible issues. 
So that means you want to be in a well ventilated area for this next part. And again, make sure the area under and around your stencil is protected because we're going to use Krylon Easy Tack Repositionable Spray here. So shake the can well and spray the back side of your stencil. And then let the stencil dry for one minute and then position the stencil on your sign. Remember to consider the margins that you made to help you align your design on your sign. And then press all areas to adhere your stencil well. Once your stencil is set, it's time to apply some Mod Podge. Um, you want to use matte Mod Podge just to be really clear here. The matte Mod Podge is going to help prevent your paint from bleeding under your stencil. So with a small paintbrush, apply the matte Mod Podge into all areas that you plan to paint your design and apply in all directions on your stencil. And then once the Mod Podge is fully applied, your sign needs to dry one to two hours. It all depends on your local climate and humidity just how long it needs. But when the Mod Podge is dry, it's time to apply your paint. The key here is not to apply too much paint at once. So I recommend pouring a little paint into a paint tray or on a paper plate. And remember I mentioned earlier that the shape of the foam brush is important, and here's why. We're going to use the pounce method to apply our paint, and the best way to do this is with a round foam brush. So lightly dab your brush into the paint and apply it with a pouncing motion. That means that you keep your brush upright and continue to dab it straight up and down onto your stencil. Do not use strokes or paint side to side or up and down. Just go, just like kind of pounce it onto your project and then bring it right back up. This is a stencil technique and one of the ways professional stencilers get really awesome results. And it's again, it's called the pounce method. So here's a better look at how the pounce method looks from the side. See how I'm just barely touching the surface and coming straight back up, just sort of bouncing with a little pressure so that the paint stays on there. Once all the paint is applied, I let my sign sit for about five minutes and really no more than that. And then I gently peel away the stencil. So how'd you do? Mine turned out great, but there were a few small areas that I could improve. I used a small, fine paintbrush to touch them up, and it's no big deal. Just it's no big deal if there's a few imperfections. Maybe you like it that way, but if you don't, you can definitely just touch it up with a paintbrush. Now, your stencil will leave a small exposed area where you had to connect the counters. Some people may like the stencil look, but if you'd like, you can use your small paintbrush to connect these areas by hand. Now let's use our stencil to make a pretty tea towel. Again, make sure to follow all the safety guidelines when using the Krylon Easy Tack Repositionable Spray. So shake the can well and spray the back side of your stencil. Let your stencil dry for a minute and then gently press it onto your tea towel. Be sure to press down on those counters for the best paint application. Now before applying any paint, place a piece of butcher paper or parchment paper underneath your towel. The paint will bleed through, so you wanna make sure that you have something underneath that will absorb it. And you don't want the thing underneath it to be another part of the towel, right? Because then you just get towels or you'll get paint somewhere else. Now squeeze a small amount of fabric paint into your paint tray. With a small round foam brush, dab a little bit of paint onto your brush. We will use the pounce method again here to add our fabric paint to the tea towel. Now be careful not to press down too hard or the fabric paint may bleed under your stencil. So take your time and enjoy the process. Once you've applied paint to your entire design, allow your paint and stencil to dry for about five minutes and no more than that. Carefully peel your stencil away from your tea towel. I hung my tea towel over the back of a chair to allow it to dry overnight. Didn't these turn out great? I really love these designs and they make awesome gifts. And honestly, what a time saver this technique is when it comes to making a lot of things or gifts or things that you wanna sell all at once. Now to get the most out of your reusable stencils, I got one right here, it's important to take care of them. I was able to use mine 
more than five times without having to wash it. Now, if you're not planning to reuse your stencil right away, you can gently wash it with regular dish soap and water to get more life out of it. After washing, gently pat it dry with a paper towel and allow um, it some time to fully air dry. Be careful if you're using a regular towel because they sometimes get caught on the small edges of the cut design. The next time you use your stencil, don't forget to start with applying a fresh coat of Easy Tech spray so that it actually sticks to your project. Now, if you have any questions about making reusable stencils that actually work that I didn't answer here in this tutorial or anything related to this, please let me know. I love to help. Leave your question below this video or come over and ask in my craft group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. <music>